rest of the Bible says. Amen. Don't hold back. Preach. Amen. Thank you for letting me preach. I appreciate you coming up here. Luke chapter 6. And I don't normally do this, but uh, these are the words of Jesus Christ. Would you mind standing as we read the read the, uh, the words of God? If you mind stand, if you're able, you don't have to, but if you're able to stand. We're going to read uh, Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. The Bible says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it, fe immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Heavenly Father, I sure do love you, and I thank you for your holy word, and I thank you for the blood of Jesus, and I just thank you for everything you do, for, the, for just how you take care of every single thing, Father. I do pray, Lord, that you would put your words in my mouth. Lord, get me out of the way. Help me to preach what you want me to preach tonight. And I pray, Lord, that uh, somebody will get some help to somebody tonight, Lord, and uh, whether they're online or here in this church, I just pray be a blessing to them. I thank you for everything you do, and I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> I just have a little milk for you tonight, okay? Amen. You know, milk is good, right? Yes. A little milk. You know, I don't know sometimes, I, you know, I've never tried warm milk. Warm milk is supposed to be soothing to the stomach. You know, it soothes, you know? Yeah. That's what I guess if it's almond milk, you know, <laughs> milk is milk. But milk is, you know, it helps settle the stomach. Um, you know, it's pretty, what I have, what I have you pretty, tonight is pretty straightforward. It's not any deep doctrine, Amen. just some milk, Amen. just some milk. The Lord spoke uh, some things to us uh, through his word. You know, he said, he said a lot of things, you know, do something, then we should probably do it. You know, these are like commands, these are like orders, is what I'd like to call them. You know, and I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has some good things to say some things that we could take heed to, some good advice for us. He has some things, you know, to say the least, it's good advice. He's got, you know, he has the words of life. In Matthew 4 and verse 4, you can turn there, Matthew 4 and verse 4. Matthew 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We live by the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We live by the words of God. That's what we live by. We need his words. We need this. What does it say? The verse says he, he shall not live by bread alone. You know, you can't just eat bread. You can't just live on the things of this life and this world. We need to have uh, uh, the words of God, the bread of life. What does that mean? We, so if we, if we shall not do one thing, that means we shall do another. And what shall we do? What shall we live by? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, if you look at the word shall, you know, shall is like uh, he shall receive his wages. He shall go forth. In, uh, some of you might be in the construction industry. You might look at uh, like specifications and code language in the construction industry. There's two words they use mainly, shall and should. If it says should, it's a best practice. You should do this. You should erect or pull this wire or, or plumb this wall in a certain way. You should do it, but it's not a requirement. But then there's sometimes when it says shall, and that means for code and construction, you have to do it that way. You shall do it that way. That's just the way it is. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's code. So the word shall, that means that's kind of like an order. That's like a, like a commandment, you know. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Like I said, these are like commands, like a commandment. If you look at the word, com uh, the, the definition for commandment, it's a, a command, a mandate, an order, or injunction given by authority. A charge, a precept, something like that. In the military, uh, soldiers are given orders, right? They're given orders by a commanding officer, you know, in battle, and, and maybe in wartime, the officer says, you know, go over there, take that bunker, or go over there and hide behind the, the, the wall and just wait, just following the orders. If these orders aren't followed, if we don't follow the orders of the commanding officer when we're in war, lives could be lost, people could die, you know, people, things could, you know, 
things can go very, very wrong if you don't listen to orders. You know, wait for further instructions. The, the commanding officer has the, uh, the, the soldier's best interest in mind. When you're out there on the, on the, on the field, you're, you're the responsible. Those, the, 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 the officer, they're responsible for the troops. Their lives are going to be on them. So they're responsible, and they have your best interest in mind. So they're going to tell you what to do. Now, if you don't follow their orders, you decide to take things into your own hands, you start to do something on your own, you could jeopardize the whole mission. You could jeopardize lives could be lost. You could just jeopardize your, your, your comrades, your, your soldiers that are right on the left and to the right, on, the, on the right of you. So what I like to do today is I just kind of like to go through some of the commands or the orders that our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he gave to us in the Word of God. You know, some, some, really, good, some really good stuff, you know. You know, we have a commanding officer, and the book of Hebrews chapter 2 calls him the captain, our, captain of our salvation, Amen. right? So we have, a, we have an officer, and, uh, you know, he's the captain overall, you know, and we should follow his orders. Yes. Amen? We should follow his orders. And uh, his orders are to be followed by all, you know. These were directed to all souls, all people, whosoever, everybody. These orders are directed to him. The question is, are you going to obey his orders? Are we going to obey his orders? Now, the first order I'd like to, to go over is the most important command that the Lord Jesus Christ has given. That's when I say it's the most important. It's above all. It's on the top. There's nothing else that can supersede this command for you today. Take your Bible and go to John chapter 3. Amen. John chapter 3 and verse 7. John chapter 3 and verse 7, the Bible says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. There you go. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He said, ye must be born again. If you look uh, in the dictionary and you, and you look at the definition of must, it's me to be obliged, to be necessitated. It expresses both physical and moral necessity. A man must eat for nourishment and he must sleep for refreshment. We must submit to the laws or to be exposed to punishment. Jesus Christ said, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. He did not say, ye must be baptized. He did not say, ye must go to church. He did not say, ye must keep the commandments. Ye must be a better person. He said, ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. This is the first, this is like the first birth. This is the flesh birth. Are you born again? Amen. Are you born again tonight? Amen. Are you sure you've been born again? Amen. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Do you remember that day? Yeah. You remember that day when you were born again? You should remember that day. I was Amen. born again October 14th, 2015, right in that pew Amen. back there. That's when I was born again. You should know when you were born again. It was a Wednesday night. It was a prayer meeting. Amen. I remember that. It was my second time coming to this church. Second time. I was here on a Sunday that very next Wednesday. I came here. If you don't remember that day when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior for the new birth, I take, I suggest you get that taken care of. ASAP. But you might ask, what do I do to have to be born again? Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that. What do I got to do? Be born again. It's pretty simple. Like I said, I got you some milk for I hope it's a help to you tonight. Hope it helps you tonight. So take your Bible and go um, to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, and we're going to look at verse 30. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. The Bible says, In times of his ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You need to repent. Amen. In Matthew chapter 4, let's go over there. We're going to do a lot of scriptures tonight. Um, if you get to them, cool. If not, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep going. Matthew 4 and chapter uh, uh, 17 um, Matthew, Matthew 4 and verse 17, it said, the Bible says, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, spoken aloud, repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. That's what he started preaching. He preached repentance straight out of the gate, right off the bat. Repent. Yeah. Repent. What does repent mean? What does we look it up? Look it up. What it says to feel pain, mm -hmm. sorrow, or regret mm -hmm. for something done or spoken to repent that we have lost much time in idleness or sensual pleasure, 
to repent that we have injured or wounded the feelings of a friend. A person repents only of what he himself has done or said. In theology, to sorrow or be pained for sin is a violation of God's holy law, a dishonor to his character and government, and the foulest ingratitude to a being of infinite benevolence. Wow. That's repentance, to be sorry for what we are. It's to be like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, we're, I'm a wicked sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're a sinner. If you don't know that you're a sinner, you need to get that right and you get to figure out why that you are a sinner and understand and look at the scriptures and you see that you're a sinner. We're not going to go through there. Just take my word for it. You're a sinner. You're a sinner tonight. You know, you have to come to a point in your life when you realize what your condition is, what your condition is. When you see yourself for what you actually are, you are a sinner. We're sinners. We're sinners and God cannot be in the presence of of uh, sin. God cannot be in the presence. It cannot be in his presence. You know, most people don't want to don't want to repent. They don't want to feel sorry about these things. You know what it takes? It takes humility. It takes a humble person. It takes somebody who's, who's got a little humility. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people, you know what the opposite of humility is? Pride. Pride is the opposite of humility. Look at the definition. In ethics, freedom from pride and arrogance. That's the definition of humility. Humbleness of mind. A modest estimate of one's own worth. Now, in theology, humility consists, consists in lowliness of mind, a deep sense of one's own unworthiness in the sight of God, self-abasement, penitence for sin, and submission to the divine will. You, the, you, you have to come to this spot and realize that, you know, just put all that pride down, all that vanity, all this ability that you think you have and what you think you know, and just... Put it down and say, I am a sinner. Amen. Remember the, the, the publican in uh, Luke 18 and 13, in verse 13, you don't have to go there. And the, the, it says, the, the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes to heaven. He knew where he was, he knew who he was. He didn't even, he said, I can't even look up to heaven. Just, but God be merciful to me, a sinner. Yeah. That publican knew, he, he got it, he got it. Yeah. And regardless of what you believe, Jesus said to repent. There it is. Jesus said to repent. This is the first thing you need to do. If you don't, look at uh, Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. The Bible says, I, this is Jesus Christ. This is what his words, this is the words that he spoke aloud. He says, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, Ye shall all likewise perish. Yeah. That is, that's step one. Step one is repentance. You must repent. Yeah. You must repent. If you somehow get uh, past, uh, you know, oh, and just, just to let you know, in case anybody's wondering, in case you're wondering, repentance is not a work. I know I say you got to do this, you got to do this, but it's not a work, okay? It's not a work. This is just a feeling, a sorrow, a feeling of who you really are. Yeah. Now, if you somehow get past this first command, because a lot of the world, they won't get past this first command of the Lord Jesus Christ to repent. They're too, much, they're too prideful. There's too much pride welled up in their hearts. But if you do get past this, the next thing you do is you need to seek God. Now that you realize you're worthless, dirty, unholy, and have absolutely nothing to offer. Because that's the truth. We have nothing to offer God. We have nothing. We have nothing to offer Him. But you can now turn. I mean, you're at the bottom. Think you're at the bottom. You know, you finally realize, man, I am in bad shape. I am ugly. I'm poor, wretched, blind, and naked. You got, you, you, now you got the opportunity to turn towards something better. Amen. You know what they say? You know what they say when you hit rock bottom? The only way to go from there is up. Yeah. It's up. You know, you hit rock, you finally realize your, your, your condition in eternity. The only way to go from here is up. The Bible says, you don't have to turn there in Matthew 6 and verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto, added unto you. Seek God. You realize, okay, I'm, I'm all messed up. What do I do? I got to look, I, well, God, I got to go after God now. I got to seek God. That's what it is. You got to repent. What do you got to do? Look at uh, Mark, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Matthew, Mark. I know where it's at. 
Mark, Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1 and verse 15, the Bible says, Jesus Christ says, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Amen. You got to believe. So you got, you got step one done, right? Step one done. You got you to repent. You repented. Now you got to believe the gospel. You know, I, I don't know if you guys are out there. If you ever had an opportunity talking or witnessing to somebody, I'm really tired of listening to all this nonsense of the, what people believe in this world. Yes. It's a hogwash. Amen. It's nonsense. It makes absolutely zero sense. You know, right. look at this. Look at this. Amen. There are people out there that call themselves Satanists. All right. And we all know who Satan is, right? I would imagine a Satanist is someone who worships Satan. Well, there's people calling, there's a, he's, he has this tree, he's dead now, his name is Ant, Anton LaVey. He is a Satanist, okay? Well, there's people, they call themselves Satan, and they do not even believe in the person of Satan. But they call themselves Satanists. That's just stupid. That's just dumb. You know, it's a humanist thing. But they do all the skulls and death and all this stuff, but they, they're saying they're Satanists, but they don't even believe in Satan. That's just dumb. You know, some believe that we're just part of some cosmic energy, you know, like Star Wars, you know, like we're all, you know, going to be Jedis or something. I don't know. Like we're some cosmic energy source. And when we die, our life just goes up into the energy and joins the energy to everybody else. Right. That's not true. It's not true. That's a lie. Amen. You know, others believe in space aliens who came down from another galaxy far, far away. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about any of those movies or anything, but. And they came from another galaxy far away, and they seeded the planet, right? They seeded the planet that they, they started. That's what people believe, you know? Before I was saved, I started going down that road. I'm like, well, that makes sense. Of course that believes that, you know? That makes sense. Why, 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 why do they believe that, but they won't believe that life was created on Earth by an eternal, infinite being? I mean, that's a pretty far-fetched story. The aliens and the spaceships coming yeah. to another planet. That's pretty far-fetched, right? Yeah. right. I, mean, I mean, I don't know if you read the Bible, but it's some amazing stuff. And you're, yeah. I want to say it's far-fetched, but it's pretty wild, man. There's some wild stuff you can find here. Why don't they believe this? Yeah. I don't know. Well, actually, I do know. <laughs> the reason that they, uh, they, they want to go with the space alien and how they uh, seeded the planet it's because that space alien ain't going to tell them what they're doing wrong. Yes, that's He ain't going to tell them what they're doing wrong. God's going to tell them what they're doing wrong. He's like, no, I don't want to know what I'm doing wrong. I just, I just want to deal with the space alien. That's why. That's why. God will tell them. Amen. They believe that men wrote about these things. There's plenty of authors out there that write about the aliens and outer space and all this crazy stuff. But they, and they believe the men that wrote this book. But they won't believe the men who were moved by the Holy Spirit to write this book, to write the things that we put in here. God spake, used men and moved by the Holy Ghost. They won't believe them because like you know, a preacher tells us all the time, you open this book and it's just a mirror. It shows, you, it shows us who we are. They don't want to know. They just want to go on living the way where they're living. You know, so many people, they just want to continue, you know, believing in a lie, whatever lie it is, as long as they don't have to stop their sin They'll, they'll be fine just believing that no matter how, what it does to their eternal soul. Right. And then again, you know, I, 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 I run across people that, you know, they believe in God. They believe in God and they believe, you know, oh, God's just in control. You know, oh, God, he, uh, he, uh, he holds me in his hands. You know, he's, he's looking at God's looking out for me. I believe in a higher, higher power. I believe in Allah, a God. I believe in this. Just believing in God Okay, just believing in God, it's not going to cut it. Right. Just believing in God is not all you need. Yeah. Look at what the Bible says. Look what Jesus Christ says. Look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 1. The Bible says, Jesus Christ says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. That's a command. Yeah. Come on. That's a command. He told us to believe in him. And if Jesus Christ told us to do that, we need to do that. We need to believe in him. Amen. Believe also in me. The Bible says in John 6, 29, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe on him who he hath sent. You need to believe on Jesus Christ. The Bible is very clear about this. Amen. Just believe in God isn't enough. Plenty of people believe in God. There's, yeah. so, there's a lot of people that be out there that believe in God. 
But what do we need to do? We don't have to turn there. The Bible says in Acts 16, verse 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Yes, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That is it. You must believe on Jesus Christ. And not just that he existed, and he does. Or that you believe he was a great teacher, and he is. Amen. You are to put your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Nothing else, not one thing. Yes, trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus. Belief is having faith. You've got to have faith. We heard that, right? You've got to have faith, right? Uh, look at... Uh, Look at Mark 11. I just realized, man, I'm in the Gospels. Like pretty much every verse I got is in the Gospel. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, and we're going to look at uh, verse 22. Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, the Bible says, And Jesus answered, well, Jesus says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. You've got to have faith in God. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You find that in Hebrews 11, verse 1. How do, we, how do we get faith? How do we have faith? How do we get this faith? Go to the Scriptures. The Bible says, so faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We need the God. We know these are the very words of life. That's how we get faith. As we read the Word of God, we pray, ask, God, reveal the truth to me. Show me what it is that I need to know to have more faith. Lord, increase my faith. Amen. You ever hear somebody say, well, I believe my faith will save me. I believe my faith will work things out. And they say, my faith, my faith, my faith. What, <laughs> what do you have faith? I mean, could, could tell me something, please. What faith is this? Amen. I was at work once several years ago, and I was, I was trying to witness this, a co-worker. And I said, uh, I, I, don't, I can't remember what I said, but he goes, well, I believe my faith. And I said, well, what's your faith? Well, you know, that's, that's my faith. Oh, wow, well, sorry. Maybe I'm on my way to hell and you don't want to show me the way out. But that's, a, that's it's just, I don't even know what, it, what does that mean? He didn't even want to tell me what his faith was. There are plenty of people that have faith in something, right? They have faith in their, their, uh, their jobs. They have faith in their families, which we should have faith, but not going to get you to heaven. They have faith in the, maybe their, uh, their abilities. Maybe they're talented. Some people might even have faith in their car, you know? But I tell you what, not one of these things is going to get you into heaven. And the only thing, like faith in your car, all it's going to do is get you when running off a cliff. It's going to take you right down in the pits of hell. Yeah. That car ain't going to do nothing for you. Your good works ain't going to do nothing. Faith in any of that Amen. is not going to help you Amen. at all. At all. Look at, um, look at uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25, the Bible says, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through what? Faith in his blood. You must have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and the fact that it will wash your sins away. You have faith in that tonight? You have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that actually washed your sins away and they're far as east from the west? They're putting a little pouch or cast over shore down in the deepest depths of the sea? Are you have faith in that tonight? Yes, I hope you have faith in that tonight. First John 1 7, you don't have to turn there. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. The, that, the Bible says all sin. That means all sin. Past, present, and future. All your sin that you will commit again. Those, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. You need to know that his blood washed your sins away, and those sins are gone. My sins are gone. There's a song, my sins are gone. Praise God, my sins are gone. You know, there's a, there's a track. You know, you've seen this track. You know, we're putting stamps on there. We're handing these tracks out. It's a good little track. If you haven't read it, take a, take a read it. Well, there's a little page in your page seven of the little track. It's God's path. You know, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, it's really cool. And it's basically God's path to salvation. It's real simple. Repent, believe, ask, receive. Amen. Repent, believe, ask, receive. It's a great little track. I like this little track. Amen. So the next thing you got to do is you got to ask. You got to ask. What did Jesus Christ say in uh, uh, Matthew 7? 
Matthew 7, Matthew 7 and verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You've got to ask him. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, you can confess the Lord Jesus as your Savior, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the mouth, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is some milk. I said, this is some good stuff. I hope you guys know this stuff. And if you're already saved here tonight, you've done all these things, I hope you're remembering these things so you can tell somebody else about yeah. this. Amen. You need to ask God. Now, one thing about God, our God is a perfect gentleman. Amen. He's not going to force you to do anything, but you need to ask him. If you want to be saved, you'll be saved. If you don't want to be saved, he won't save you. Right. You don't want to be saved. Amen. But on the other hand, if you do want to be saved, just ask him. He is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. He will save you. Amen. Don't put it off. Now, if you have never asked God to forgive you of your sins, why don't you just ask him right now? Yeah. There's an altar right here. You can walk up here right now. Amen. If you're not saved tonight, I think I know most of you, and most of you are saved tonight. But if you're not, take care of it right now. Take yeah. care of it right now. You can, you know, you, no one's going to make fun of you or anything. You on the, on the Internet, if you're watching this from home, if you're not saved, Get down and ask God to save you right now. Amen. And he will. He will. Yes. You can do that right now wherever you are. You don't have to be any special place. You can be, God wants you, right, he'll, he'll find you right where you are. He'll come to you. You got to ask. And finally, you got to receive. You got to receive. Matthew 21 and verse 22. Matthew 21 and verse 22. Uh, it says here, all, and all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. You got to receive the gift. The Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's a gift. He wants, he's given this to you. But you have to take it. You have to take this gift. You know, one of the, you know, you can't just, if, you know, God's sitting there with his arms open. He's ready. Are you going to receive that gift? That, 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 that comfort that he has, are you going to receive that? That's what you have, to, you have to receive it. If you got up to these three points, you ask forgiveness, you need to receive. You can ask forgiveness, say, okay, my sins are forgiven, but are you going to receive, receive that gift? Are you going to say, well, wait, I'm not sure about it, you know? You have to receive the gift. The Bible says in, uh, you don't have to turn there, uh, John 1 and uh, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You just got to take it. It's free. It's a free gift. It's a free gift of salvation. God won't make you take it. You don't have to take it. You know, one of the great things about our Lord, well, just one, there's a multitude, but you know one of the uh, great things about Jesus Christ is that he always tells us what to do next. Yeah. He always tells us what to do next. Now that you are born again, so if you've done all these things, you've uh, repented, you believed, and then you asked, and then you received uh, Jesus Christ. That means you're born again. That's you're born again now. You're spiritually born again. That dead spirit on the inside is now reborn, and it's alive again. Now that you're born again, uh, born again, get up and follow Him. Yeah. That's what it is. He tells you what He needs to do. The rem now, these remaining commands or orders that I'm pulling out from the the, uh, the the Bible, they're only good. The rest of these are for Christians. If you're lost in here tonight, the rest of this isn't going to mean anything to you. Because you've you got to get those first things done. You've got to be born again. You've got to do that first. But uh, look, at, uh, look at John chapter 12. I'll try to get, out, get you out of here before 9 o'clock tonight. John chapter 12. John chapter 12 and verse 26. The uh, Bible says, Jesus Christ says, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. We've got to follow Jesus Christ. I'll go through these verses here. You don't have to turn to them. You can write them down if you want. Luke 9 and 23, the Bible says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself take, and take up his cross daily and follow me. Jesus Christ said to follow me. He said to follow. You, need, you must follow him. 
Once you're born again, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there, you know, in your, in your, uh, knowing that you're going to heaven, you know, don't just sit there, do something, get up and start walking after him, follow him. In John 21 and 22, Jesus saith unto him, if, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Yeah. In Luke 5, 27, he says, and after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Imagine that. You know, Jesus Christ, the king of the universe, the one and only, comes in there and just says, follow me. I bet you that was a powerful, powerful thing that happened when he said this to, that, uh, to, to Levi. You know, he said, follow me. And that's why he says he got up and he followed him. Are you following Jesus Christ tonight? Are you following him? I hope you're following him. You know, we, that's what we try to do. We want to follow him. Take your Bible and go to Luke chapter 21. These are commands of the Lord Jesus Christ. He told us to do these things. And if you read your Bible, and if you do read your Bible, you'll know these things. Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. The Bible says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. It says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always. you got to pray. You gotta speak with God. You gotta get down on your knees. You gotta say, you gotta, you gotta pour out your soul to Him. You gotta have a communication, a conversation. You gotta have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it's it's a, it's a necessity if you want to have some victory in this Christian life that you're living today. If you want to have victory, you need to be in prayer. If you're not in prayer, you will you know what that's the opposite of victory is loss. You will lose rewards. You will, your Christian life will be affected. If you do not pray and spend time with the Lord, Luke 22 and verse 40 says, And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. You know what? Well, come on. There's a world out there and there's all kinds of flashing lights and, man, really cool things all over the place. And, man, those are temptations. There had no temptation taken you, taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to es escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Remember that verse. Amen. Memorize that verse. I think it's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Yes. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Memorize that verse. When you're being tempted to sin, say this ain't nothing. There ain't no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. These are common things. Amen. The things that everybody deals with. Just pray that, pray that to, 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 to God, and he'll help you with that sin. Pray that you enter not in temptation. Mark, uh, Matthew 9 and verse 38 says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into this harvest. We need more workers. We need more workers. Pray that more workers come out Amen. to preach the word of God. That we got people, you know, we had a nice big showing uh, over at uh, Santee, we had eight people, man, you know, men preaching on the street. That was fantastic. That was great. That was great. Pray that we get some more workers, more laborers to the harvest. There's a harvest that's going to be harvested one day, you know. And uh, we need more laborers to start preaching the Word of God and tell people that there's a Savior and tell them what they need to do to get saved. We're commanded to read and study the Scriptures. Look at John chapter 5. John chapter 5, I'm almost done. John chapter 5, verse 39, says here, Search the Scriptures, Jesus Christ said this, For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus Christ has commanded you to search the Scriptures, to get into the book. Are you going to follow his command tonight? Are you going to listen to him? Or are you just going to close the book and say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not. I mean, that's really the only thing you can do. Is either you're going to follow his commands, you're going to do these things, you're going to pray, you're going to follow him, you're going to search the scriptures, or you're not. Do you want victory in this life? I want victory in this life. I want, I want to have a good judgment seat. Are you studying the scriptures? John 14 and 23. Don't, you don't have to turn there. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me... If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. I want, I want God and the Lord Jesus Christ to make their abode with me. Yeah. You know? I want that. 
You know, keep his words. Yes. Man shall, uh, Matthew 4, 4, he says, man shall not live by bread alone, by, but we already read this, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need to search and study the scriptures. Study the shall I self approved unto God, right? Yeah. Study. Look at the book. Read the words. Amen. We're commanded to love and worship him. When, he's, uh, when, uh, when Jesus Christ is uh, in, the, in the wilderness or the desert, he's up there being tempted of Satan. In Mark 12 and verse 30, you can go ahead and turn there. Mark 12 and verse 30. Mark 12 and verse 30. The Bible says, Jesus Christ says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Ouch. This is the first commandment. He's telling you what you got to do. You got you to love God. Do you love God? Are you worshiping him? Or are you worshiping, you know, television, entertainment, sports, your video games, YouTube videos, social media? What is it that you worship? What is it that you're good at? Yeah. What is it? I want you to examine yourself and find out the things that you're good at. And see if those are, are those holy things, are those right things? Would God be pleased with my achievements and the things that I'm really good at? Will God be pleased with those things? Ask yourself that. In Matthew 4.10, Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Are you serving God? Or are you serving your belly? What are you serving tonight? What is it that you're serving? We got to love the brethren. In John 15 and verse 12, it says, This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. We got to love each other, right? We got to be good to each other. That's, you know, you know, we got a small church and we're pretty good. We know there's not a lot of strife. There's not a lot of stuff going on here. You know, it's good. We got a good church and we take care of each other. But there's bigger, there's bigger churches and bigger problems out there. And there's, there's probably fights in between saved Christians. You should be thankful that we're not dealing with that here today. Love each other. Let's love each other and help each other out. Don't waste your time. Don't waste things. Jesus Christ said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth. Don't waste time building up a massive wealth. You know, if you're wealthy, okay, well, praise the Lord. Thank God for that. But don't waste time in thinking that's all you need to do and being a, being a, uh, and achieving at work. If you're getting, if you're doing, if you're working hard, at your job, or whatever it is you're doing, if you're working hard at that, then praise the Lord. You'll get, you'll get promoted if that's what you need. But don't make that your whole life. Don't lay up for treasures here on this earth. He says, uh, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Yeah. Treasures in heaven. Those at the judgment seat of Christ, you have uh, you know, gold, precious, uh, gold, silver, and precious stones, you know, those things. Lay up, get some of that stuff. Try to get that wood, hay, and stubble out of, the, yeah. out of there, you know? Amen. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What are you spending your time on? Mm. What are you doing with your spare time? That's the big thing. What are we doing with, my spare, with our spare time, mm. you know? Are we doing things that are pleasing to God, or are we just wasting time sitting on the couch, clicking the channel, clicking the, 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 the game controller, Swiping up and down on social media, clicking through all the YouTube videos. What is it? You know, if you watch, I mean, I mean, somebody, like I said, the preacher says, you know, this friend, probably the same friend that you got that told me that what he does, the same friend that the preacher has. You know, I don't know if you've done it. If you get on a YouTube video and watch, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. It's literally a rabbit trail right now. Literally a rabbit trail. I was watching videos one time on YouTube, okay? It's confession's good for the soul, you know. I'm not confessing my sins to you. I was watching videos, and then all of a sudden, you know, they just and then another one comes up. Oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Next thing you know, what am I watching? I'm watching this lady uh, with a little, what do they call it, a spinning reel, all right? It was to make yarn. And she was combing out the hair of her rabbit, or Angora rabbit, and making yarn. See? Watch out. Don't go down that road. Ooh, yeah, the ra it was literally a rabbit, the Angora rabbit. I was like, what? Then I'm sitting here, what am I watching this for? You know? But, you know, watch out what you're spending your time on. You know, spend time with God. Spend time in the book. It's not like you can read this book one time through and have it down. You ain't going to have it down. I can read one paragraph or one verse and I'm like, ugh, I don't get it. 
You know, read. You got to read, 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 read. Amen. What treasures are you laying up in heaven? You know, what, what time? What are you spending your time doing? Take your Bible and go to Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 16. The Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You got a light shining? Is there a light shining in your life when you're out there? Does somebody look at you and see something different about you? Or do they look at you and say, oh yeah, he's just like everybody else. Are you different? Do people know that there's a difference in you? Are you out there? Because it says, it says right here, let your light so shine before men. You go out there and let your light shine before men. That they may see your good works. They're going to see what you're doing, what you're doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? And glorify your Father which is in heaven. We glorify God. We glorify our Father that's up in heaven. Right? Is your light shining out there? Are you letting people know that you're a Christian? Are you letting people know that it's like, you know what? You're, you're, you know what? Maybe somebody says you're weird. Well, Amen. I'm weird then. You know, I'm weird because we're preaching on the street corner. We're handing out tracts. We're hollering at people. We're holding up signs. We're doing these things. Why? Because there's a real hell. But praise the Lord, there's a real heaven too. Mark 5 and 19, the Bible says, Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Tell people. Tell your friends. You know, it's one of the hardest things to do is tell our friends. People we love, the people we care about, about the Lord Jesus Christ and, and what he can do for them and what he's done for me. It's hard, but we're commanded. Jesus Christ told us to do that. We should do it. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get mocked. You're going to get yelled at. You may get laughed at, but we're told to do it. Now, finally, well, not finally. I said that once already before, so it's not finally. Um, he even commands us. Look at, uh, look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. This is good right here. Look at this one. You're going to like this. You know, like this, Matthew chapter 11 um, and uh, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You need some rest? Are you tired? Need a break? There's rest in Jesus Christ. You can get some rest in Jesus Christ. In verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn about him. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. You see that? Remember when we go back when I said the definition of that word shall? Yeah. Shall? He uses it again. And ye shall find rest. Yeah. If, you, if you, you take his yoke upon you and learn of him, you will. Shall. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to get some rest. Yeah. I don't know about you. I'm a little tired every once in a while. I need some rest. I need some rest. Amen. All right. Finally, in closing, <laughs> uh, take your Bible and go to Luke chapter 12. You know, these are some simple things, you know. Hope you take this and uh, you can use this, you know. Remember the biggest thing is, when, is soul winning. When you want to witness to somebody, when you want to say, how do I be safe? You know, it's going, to be a, it's going to be a rare time where you're out there soul winning and someone comes up to say, hey, hey, Adam, how do I get saved? <laughs> you know, how often does that happen? doesn't happen very often. If someone does, do you know what to say? Yeah. Do you know what to say? I hope you know what to say. Repent, believe, ask, receive. Remember that. Remember that. That's what you got to do. Just remember that. Okay? And that's all you can remember to say. Repent, believe, ask, receive. If you remember those words, you'll remember what to do. You know what repentance is. You know what it means to believe. You know what asking is. And you know what it means to receive. Yeah. It'll, it'll spark. Repent, believe, ask, receive. Just remember that. I'll thank God for this little track here. This is a good track. Amen. This is a good track. You know, the funny thing is page one. Dear friend. Have you been born again, it says. That's important. That's an important thing. Uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh in an hour when ye think not. Are you ready? Are you ready? You sit there right in your seat right there tonight. Ask yourself this question. Am I ready? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to die? Because you will die one day. Yeah. The Bible says, as it wants to die, you're going to die one day. One day you're going to die. Are you ready for that day? That day when you finally take your last breath. And I don't mean 
I don't mean, uh, are you ready that your family will be taken care of or that you have enough life insurance or you've got all your, 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 uh, um, your, uh, whatever the word I'm looking for, your, 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 yeah, your ducks in a row. Thank you. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I mean, are you ready to meet your maker? You know, that's a common saying. Are you ready to meet your maker? If you were to die tonight, are you ready to meet him? Now, I ask this question both to the lost and to the saved, and there's lost people watching tonight. I'm asking you to this night. Are you ready to stand before God and be judged? If you're going to stand, you're going to stand before God, whether you're saved or lost, one day. You know, if you're saved, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ, and he's going to judge everything you've done since you've been saved. You're going to look at he's going to, he's going to, he's going to try your works. He's going to see what you've done. And if you're lost in here tonight and you don't get saved and you die tonight, you're going to go to the great white throne judgment. The books are going to be opened. And he's going to look in there. He's going to, he's going to look for your name. You're going to tell him your name. And you're going to be like, yeah, that's my name, Raphael Michael Zimmer. Whatever your name is, you're going to tell him your name. He's like, no, he's going to spell it out for him. You're going to say it very clear. However, you, you, know, you must have missed my name. But if you're lost in here tonight, if you're, watch, if you're watching at home and you're lost, and your name's not written in the book of life, and you stand before the great white throne judgment, you, it's too late. It's too late. Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to die? Christian, are you ready to give an account of all the things you've done since you've been saved? No matter what you choose, no matter what you choose tonight, you need to prepare yourself. Hopefully you are preparing for life everlasting. You know, if, if, this, is, if this is the case, you should be preparing to have a good judgment seat, right? If you're saved, you should be preparing that. And if you, do, if, if you just follow all these things, you know, you know, follow him, pray, search the scriptures, you know, love and worship him, love the brethren, tell other people. You, uh, if you just do those things, you're going to have a you're going to have a pretty good judgment seat, I think. I, I would say you're going to have a pretty good judgment seat. No matter what you choose, all you have to do is do what the Lord told you to do. That's all you got to do. It's real simple. Just open the book. What is it that you want me to do? And it'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And if in your blindness you choose death, because you will be choosing death. If that's what you do, if you're lost and you decided not to choose life, prepare yourself. You are going to be in for a big surprise. You're going to be shocked. It's going to shock you. Look at Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah is right after Song of Solomon, right before Jeremiah. Not after Ezekiel like where I was going. Isaiah chapter 13. And we're going to look at uh, verse 6. The Bible says, How will ye? For the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. You're going to be scared. You're going to be scared when you're down there facing the white throne down in hell. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flames. You're going to get into hell. If you go to hell, if you're lost tonight and you die tonight and you end up in hell, you are going to be amazed that you're there. You're not going to care. No one's going to care about you. You're going to see. You're going to be amazed that you're, at, 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 that you're even there. It's going to be a shock. It's going to be the shock of your life. If you're lost in your day, won't you just get saved? Won't you be saved? Look at this. See this up here? See that? See that? See that? All the lights, the one going down. See that? See that? Broad is the way. I can't wait to be singing heavenly hymns, Lord, and just glorifying you for all eternity, Father. I just thank you so much that, uh, that you've just taken care of all things, Father. We do worship, praise, and love you. And I ask that.